today I have the pleasure of introducing Terrell Hobson. He is a fourth grader that was selected by his principal to represent Glover CLC, the Wildcats. Terrell is and has always been an outstanding student as evidenced by previous Ames Web scores in the Universal Enriched Tier and earning a 447 advanced score on his third grade fall reading OAA. That's right. quite a pedigree right there. However, Terrell always pushes himself to do better, and he, pr he proved this by earning a 478 advanced score in his spring OAA reading score and a 437 accelerated score on the spring OAA in math. It should be noting that reading and math are his favorite subjects. Terrell is a wonderful role model for all the Glover students. He has never even had an office referral in all his years at Glover. He has consistently made the honor roll year after year. Terrell plays football for the East Dragons and even gave up part, part of his practice time to be here tonight, which explains why he's wearing his football uniform. <laughs> he also enjoys playing basketball just for fun. Glover is proud of Terrell and proud to have him represent the Wildcats. Terrell, come on up. That is my mom, Mercedes, my sister, Jane, and my grandma, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you so much. Madam President, I think, I think his mom was a graduate of Garfield High School. Is that correct? That was. All right, yeah. <laughs> well, so you don't miss any more of your practice. We will let you... Uh, scoot on out of here but with our great thanks for taking time out of football to come see us thank you so much thank you and keep up the good work yes. I'm not sure who is more excited for him himself or his sister right. <laughs> <laughs> all right so now is the time in our meeting for community and school reflections we have started school we have lots going on, I'm sure. Anyone want to go first? All right, let's go on. I have the pleasure of opening day going to several schools. I started off with Case and Londell, Pfeiffer, Smith, and Ennis, and uh, went to Litchfield Middle School, Portage Path, and Kenmore High School. And at Lawndale, uh, Dr. Gwynn uh, shared with all of her classes uh, what she considered to be how to be successful, how to make good choices. So she had three rules. Be safe, be respectful, be responsible. And as I was listening to her share that with the, I think the third grade at that time, I was looking and reflecting upon the world in which we live. If we would follow these rules, what a better world we would have. Uh, just to be safe, to be respectful, and to be responsible. Uh, we see it everywhere where people need to learn that particular lesson. I was also struck by, we've got beautiful CLCs, but uh, when I walked into, I believe, Smith and uh, over at uh, Londell, Pfeiffer, they're old buildings, but they have such wonderful character. And the students are still doing an excellent job, even when there's no air conditioning. Uh, very small hallways in some cases. Uh, but the janitors, the custodians of those buildings do an excellent job of keeping those buildings in good repair and they make you feel 
good just by being in them, even though they're not sparkling brand new like our CLC, uh, and they don't have all the computer uh, technical uh, things as our CLCs have, yet they have what most important, and that's teachers who love students, students who love learning. And so we appreciated that, uh, to have an opportunity to uh, be reminded of what uh, education is all about. Then also, um, in our journal, Ohio School Board Association, and I had asked uh, uh, Marilyn, I don't know if we could have gotten it done, I don't know if we got the poster done, but I'm hoping that, uh, as a board, we can show our support for public schools by getting a little poster, gathering around it, and standing up and holding one or more of these posters and then send that back to OSBA so that they know that Akron Public Schools stands up for public schools. Just so happens somebody in here you might know was standing up a, ho a poster. Yeah. Looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was a good start of the uh, school term and we hope that we can you know, get that poster sometime soon to get that done. Thank you. I uh, also had the pleasure of going to a couple schools this, this year as well. Uh, Firestone, on the first day, I was able to stop at Firestone High School because I wanted to get over and see how things were going. And uh, it was very quiet. I mean, you could hear a pin drop in the uh, cafeteria where they were having a study hall. And I thought, man, this is an atmosphere that's really conducive to learning. and. I mean, they started really early, so it was really nice to see that happening, especially when you have someone new that's coming in and uh, you're not sure what the climate could actually be uh, when they first come in. But uh, uh, it was very nice to see the, those young people in there um, uh, studying and getting ready for their classes as well as doing any homework. Also, um, I went to North High School, which was nice also because it, uh, as my alma mater, for one, I don't get a chance to get up there, but two, that... Uh, um, Mrs. Tech over there has done a, a great job, and you can see the atmosphere uh, of, of North High School being a real good atmosphere for, for learning as well. Uh, she had staff over there were, were really uh, respectful, and the students, which was really nice to see that they were saying, "How are you, sir?" and "How are you?" I'm thinking, "Whoa, who just saying, sir?" And, you know, but uh, it, it was nice to hear the kids saying that and, and being respectful to to uh, adults as well as uh, their classmates. And I was also over at East High School which uh, was, is very well uh, taken care of over there too. The students were very nice, very uh, likeful. The staff were happy and joyous. And I mean, it seemed like the whole school was just happy. And so that was very nice to, to see that happen. And, and, and to me, that makes it good because if the kids are happy, of course, they're going to want to learn. And so that was very nice to see that. And then the last thing I have is uh, uh, at Summit County Juvenile Court uh, with Judge Teodosio, Linda Teodosio. Um, we uh, started these circles, and they're called uh, peace circles. And from those peace circles, there were very uh, sub. There were subcommittees that were uh, laid out from that, and one was the education committee. And uh, I was chose to be the chair of the education committee. And we have I have a group of young a group of people who work young people too, and work with me on some things that we wanted to do. And so we uh, had we went into to train some C tag people. And it was a very good responses back from them. They were very happy. And we are planning to have what we call discussion circles, which is a, similar to a peace circle. There's certain rules that you have to follow, certain things that you have to go through uh, as far as the kids and the person who's running the circle, who is called the, the peacekeeper. And uh, we want to, the kids to get engaged, want them to learn. And we're in the process of trying to uh, create a movement, a movement of kids coming to school, uh, coming to learn, staying away from criminal behavior, supporting one another, and keeping each other out of trouble uh, uh, with the law and uh, while they're in school. So we're hoping that we will uh, get that movement uh, going. And we, uh, we're we going to start really just two schools, and that was at Bukdo and at East. But with the others that were, were trained from uh, uh, Kenmore and um, Kenmore and yeah, Kimmore East, I'm sorry, Kimmore East, North, North. and we are, we're, we're going to have those individuals start as well because we were going to do a pilot, then tweak 
the, the pilot and see what we can do to make it better. But since we have individuals who are trained and eager and ready to go, we're going to lay it out uh, at those schools as well. So we have four instead of just two schools. So we're, we're anxious to see how this is going to work, see if it's going to help these kids and if, it, if it's going to be something really good, which I really think it will because you have the, the adults who are excited. I think the kids will have fun uh, in these circles with, while at the same time learning. So this is going to be something uh, we're excited about starting and getting, getting ready. We hope to be started possibly within a couple of weeks in those schools and uh, uh, having some fun with the kids and the kids learning some things from those circles. So I wanted to mention that. I want, I, I sh briefly mentioned some of it last meeting, but I didn't get in, in detail such as this. But the CTAG people, they're really excited to start, and they will start probably in a couple of weeks. As we get closer and closer, we'll talk to everyone, let everyone know how we're progressing, and then we will uh, really lay it out the way that uh, it is laid out. So that maybe we'll get other schools that want to be involved, and we'll train those individuals. Because it's, not a, it's a program that's not supposed to be for the court, it's a program that the judge has just started. She wants us to go out into the community, which we're uh, also out in the community now doing things with, with people in the community, uh, with kids and parents who are having some problems or issues, uh, for, uh, people who referred uh, uh, individuals or parents or families to that. We, we're, we're taking this to the community and we're going to let go of it and it's going to be something for the community to help itself. So the, the school system is part of the community, so we decided we needed to get in, involved with the schools as well. So we're looking forward to that. Thank you. You know, it's always uh, special to engage with the community. I think part of the ten, uh, our belief is that education is a um, community proposition as well. So um, this, right before school started, I had the privilege to serve as the co-announcer for the annual Labor Day parade. It was just so wonderful to see so many kids out just having a good time before they get before they get ready for the real grind. Um, on this past Sunday, uh, we were at Summit Lake Community Center where they hosted a mini market. Summit Lake Community is considered a desert community, so they don't really have a green grocery where they have access to fresh uh, fruits and vegetables. And so they've been hosting um, uh, Summit Food Policy Coalition um, and some other community partners like the Food Bank and uh, Let's Grow Akron and a number of other folks have been hosting um, uh, mini markets uh, once a month there. And it was so, it's so uh, funny, uh, but also so rewarding to see kids buzzing around uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, tasting things for the first time and just seeing their response. You know, I, I'm a firm believer if you just change the way people eat, you can change the way our kids think. Um, so getting some of those processed foods out of their system and some of the fresh fruits and vegetables are important. But I just want to give a special shout out to Joe Tucker over at South Street Ministry who also provided brand new books for the kids. So they were able to pick up new books. Uh, they were really excited about that. Um, and so that's always good to see. Finally, on uh, this past week, we were at um, East DLC, myself, um, uh, Lisa Mansfield and Patrick Bravo for the summer graduation. You know, I, you know, I think uh, we can never really underestimate how significant that is. I mean, this year it just seems like there was so much buzz and so much wonderful energy in the room. You know, that's a real press uh, to not graduate with your class, but still have the tenacity to stay the course. Um, and see it through and it, you can just tell the young folks, you know, it, it was something about, you know, all of the district, all the high schools are there, but it was something as if all of the students became just one school, uh, rooting for one another and so that was a wonderful um, uh, thing to experience and I just have great hope uh, for the, the class of young folks who graduated last week and I think they have great hope for themselves. I have a couple things. Um, first of all, I had the pleasure. I've got two boys now at Firestone. I'm happy to have them at one school, which I know Lisa can relate to. Um, and I, I guess I was kind of chuckling to myself because it's it's like chaos, but it also you see the progression they're making. Um, Firestone has gotten everything underneath ground. That's the geothermal aspect of the construction done. 
and now if you go by you can see there's a lot of cinder blocks going up and it's nice to see a structure there when you saw a year of what looked like flat line lands and tubes and it's like where's this thing going but it's chaos but the kids are doing well and you know muddling through the little avenues we can go to to get kids dropped off um, so I wanted to say that, that that's that's nice to see uh, and nice to see the school moving forward um, also had the pleasure of uh, meeting with a man named Dallas Billington who's I guess it would be his grandfather started Akron Baptist Temple and Dallas has started a kind of a, um, a church downtown and he's looking for a venue but they're trying to raise funds and or supplies for our kids similar to the backpacks type program and I want to bring that to the attention of the board as well as the public and I want to talk to whomever and I'm looking for guidance to facilitate that anytime someone's willing to contribute to our students I think that's something we should embrace um, I know Dallas personally I know he'll follow through on it it'll be a win-win for everybody um, I do have one uh, negative thing I heard about that I wanted to bring up and as as most people know there's testing that's done at the beginning of the year to measure improvement of our students a lot of uh, the focus uh, going forward will be improvement of our students from lowest common denominator to even the gifted ones and I heard reports from two uh, parents who know me uh, that um, some testing teachers were actually telling the kids not to try and not to worry about it and that suggests to me that um, if the students tank their first test there will be vast improvement by the end of the year and I don't think that that's where we want to be I think we want to have realistic testing of our students from the get-go and just because you have a student that starts at bright and gets a little brighter but does not have that huge game um, you know, I, I don't know what can be done about it, but I do want to say that um, we want to have true testing of our students and to try and what we used to call sandbagging the test simply to show great improvement, I think, is, is not the way to go. I think that that uh, compromises the students. It shows them testing at one ability when, in essence, they should be testing at another. So I just wanted to bring that to the attention of, of my fellow board members as well as the public. Can I just piggyback off that real quick? I know that I've heard some things that that were relate to students, but when you ask the teachers what they actually said and what the students heard, it can sometimes be two different things. When you have very gifted and very talented kids, there's nothing that stresses them out more than taking a test and not knowing the answer. If you're a bright kid and you're used to get sitting down with a test and going, oh, know that, know that, know that, know that, all of a sudden you're faced with a test where even if someone tells you, you don't know this material. It's okay if you don't do well on this one because eventually you're going to get retested on it. Sometimes when you process that through a teenager's brain, it sounds like, I don't care how you do on this, you can tank it if you want. When what they're really trying to say or what they're really saying is, don't worry about this. You're not supposed to know the information. It's okay because we're, well, there's reports all over the country really of kids who are feeling ill because they're getting they're facing a test that they don't know the answers and there's nothing that a bright kid likes about not knowing the answers they're not used to it so perhaps that's a situation that needs looked into but I, some of the people that I spoke to um, when you dig deep a little deeper you find that the actual situation was an attempt at reassurance that it's not something you should know and it's okay Okay, and I don't doubt that. Now, I, I don't want to say that, that this is the rule versus the exception, sure. but it's something that I see as a potential problem if it's not already a problem. I wanted to bring that up. Thank you. Yeah, and I think some teachers did a really good job of conveying that because my daughter had taken a test and she got something like four out of six. I was shocked. She had to help me. She was right. like, no, no, I don't know the material. It's it's okay. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So saying it's okay if you don't do well on this in a teenage brain sometimes doesn't process the same as as a reassurance so just just throwing that out there as a possibility i don't um, doubt there's some truth to that yes anyone else have anything to share okay um we don't have any requests to address the board today but we do have several communications and recognitions so my first pleasure is to introduce terry albanese 
who is here. She is the assistant to the mayor for education, health, and families, and she's here to talk to the board. You can come on up. Please. Cards, I'm not sure okay. that I have them okay. I don't know where you want me to stand. And up here is fine. That way they can hear you all right. Then we can point all the cameras towards you. Yeah. That's okay. awesome. <laughs> So what I did when I started, I just started calling people and said, can I meet with you? Can you tell me what's going on with Akron Public Schools? And David James was gracious enough to meet with me and Lisa Mansfield and several others. Um, so I could just find out. My world has been in um, higher education, medical education, and health services research. So K through 12, it's a whole new ball game for me. But I'm so excited about so many things that I have learned from the people that I've met with. And I'm so grateful for the warm welcome. One of the other things that the mayor has done was signed up through the National Conference of Mayors to uh, recognize October as the, um, the month to, uh, for uh, promoting anti-bullying and anti-bullying campaign. And I don't know anything about that. <laughs> so I became as much of an expert as I could. The organization was supposed to send us information. And I got a little bit. So I've been researching that. But called upon Billy Soul and uh, Captain Calvaruso from APP and Dan Rambler and Andrew was, they were so um, gracious to meet with me and discuss how could we, um, how could we put on this event and do it in the most productive and positive way. And so we're working on that. So if you'll save the date October 7th at the main library, uh, probably 5.36 p.m. We're gonna be working out the details in the next week or two. Um, there's a video involved. You may have heard of it. It's called Bully. Um, it's a film and it's very long. We're gonna try to keep it a little bit shorter because it's very heavy. It, it, breaks your heart and makes you, you sick to your stomach. So that, that is a little hard, but it's the reality that kids have gone through in this world. And we don't want to be a village, quite frankly. And so whatever we can do as a community uh, to promote respect and responsibility and uh, treating others that way as opposed to bullying, um, we're going to jump on board and do what we can to promote that positive behavior um, from the entire community, not just the kids. So that's what I'm about. Um, I'm here to support on behalf of the mayor, Akron Public Schools. And so please feel free to call upon me as I call upon your staff. Um, so grateful again for the opportunity to be here, to meet with so many of you. And I'm so excited about all the things that I've heard going on. It's, just a great time to, to be involved and so glad to be here. Thank you so much. Next, we have a presentation from presentation of, from Power Up, Green Up, and we have Sharon Seaton. Hi. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hello. I've done this with you before. Nice to see you again. Thank you very much for inviting me back again and organizing this, Tracy. Um, again, I'm Sharon Seaton with Dominion. 
and every year we uh, present our K-12 and higher educational grants. And I am very happy to say that we received a number of uh, grant proposals, and through the judging of all the proposals that we received, uh, we selected, for this year, we have 12 schools and organizations that are going to share a pot of $80,000, but only a couple are getting $10,000. And I know I was here last year for a couple, I think we had given, and it's always great to come back and provide another check for $10,000 to the Akron Public Schools, in this case, the National Inventors Hall of Fame, for the STEM uh, program, and it's the title of the program, and you might want to tell us a little bit more about it, Tracy, is the Power Up, Green Up program. If you'd like to share a little bit sure. about that. Sure. So this is the, this $10,000 will be used for STEM expansion efforts that will begin to occur throughout the district, and we'll be starting at the National Inventors Hall of Fame Middle School, where we'll pilot this program. There's an educator who started her own digital animation company, and she has actually um, developed several modules that a University of Akron candidate who might be the facilitator in our after school club at the middle school will then take the kids through. The kids will actually learn how to animate digitally on the computer, but it's all environmental based. And so we're hoping that we'll, we know that the standards will then transfer right into the classroom and they'll be able to use it as an enhancement to what the teacher is already instructing the kids to do. So this is going to be started here in the next few weeks with um, the person who's over that digital animation company. Her name is Stephanie Sutton. And then we hope to, we know we're going to start in Finley Elementary, which will occur in the spring, and then we're going to select one more place for um, that to spread out to. So very appreciative because this helps get the expansion work started within uh, the North Cluster. It's wonderful to work with you again. Last year it was Sharon Kaplan from the STEM school, yes. and that work continues. And Thank you for that, sir. Well, you do a tremendous job. I just want you to know it's always good to hear from the number of proposals that we get from Akron Public Schools. And when the judges read them, this was very well rated. I mean, this was one of the highest rated ones. And it's my pleasure, I see Carla sit over there, to partner with you and so many other things that Dominion does and the Dominion Foundation. Um, which was mentioned in the backpack adventure. We also support with that too. A lot of great things going in, in Akron with education. Please keep it up. Here's the real one too. <laughs> so Tracy's not going to get too comfortable because she is part of the next presentation with several other folks who on the left. for STEM education, and Burnett Williams with Children's Hospital and John Bellissimo with Goodyear Tire Rubber Company have been leading a campaign team uh, that includes uh, Megan Everhart, and also uh, we're going to be talking about what happened with uh, GAR and Kirsten Toth is here representing the GAR Foundation. And, and so, at any rate, I'll just kind of go through this and share a little bit with you about why we're, we're here. Uh, we really just want to say thank you on behalf of the Akron Public Schools for your efforts. I know that you met on a monthly basis, and you met with Superintendent James and also with uh, Assistant Superintendent Ellen McWilliams to find out ways to help raise money for STEM education. And the photos that you see here are actually our STEM high school uh, learners that we consider digital learners, critical thinkers, and problem solvers. And those snapshots are of them in action. The funds that you have provided are really going to help us move that forward, that work forward. And we, you charged us, uh, Kirsten, last year. You said, OK, if you guys can make, you know, if you can raise $117,000, we'll match it. So in fact, was it two? It was two hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars. You said you match it. So we did that. But what really pushed us over the edge, which is why we want to thank you, John, is Goodyear came in at the end there, and we we met the goal early. He 
they all together they contribute seventy thousand dollars, but the last fifty thousand dollars is really what we need. speak for us, uh, you know, we were really honored to be able to do this. I mean, uh, a year and a half ago, I was at co-chair this with Burnett, you know, I had two questions, you know, why me and what is STEM? But <laughs> in that year and a half ago, I learned a lot being the director of the Innovation Center. Uh, we employ scientists and technical people all the time, so this is a real win for the community as well as for Georgia So Thank you very much for the opportunity, and again, we really appreciate being able to be part of this. It's great. To initiative that the schools have taken on. Thank you. Thank you. And I wanted to make sure that I acknowledge each of you individually. Burnett, thank you for your tireless work. I know you worked alongside John to organize the campaign team and to have those meetings. And I know that I think the final push was the breakfast that you organized. Maybe you can tell a little bit about what happened in that breakfast. And instructional leader Johnson, will you also join us up here, please? <laughs> and Ellen was also an integral part of that team, so uh, thanks, Ellen. You should be up here as well. <laughs> this is all about you guys. <laughs> Um, we hosted in February, we hosted a community leaders breakfast and tried to, uh, not tried to, we successfully um, had uh, representatives from many of our corporations uh, present to not only hear about um, what is happening at, the, at our STEM high school, but also to experience the learners and to see the school. Uh, our premise was that if they would have an opportunity to meet the students, to meet uh, some of the leadership team under, under uh, uh, Principal Johnson's leadership that there's no way they would not support the effort and um, overall we found that to be the case that once our um, community leaders came through we had an opportunity to experience the school and, and, and meet some of the learners and, and meet the team there uh, when we made the ask which we made a point to make the ask that day um, of the breakfast um, the majority of, of the folks that we uh, made contact with said either yes today or yes maybe I can't write the check today but uh, we're going to support this effort. Um, the other big part of what we were asking was not just for financial support, but the opportunity to partner with some of these corporations so that when this campaign is, is ended officially as this particular GAR match campaign, that we would have um, organizations that would be, would be willing to come in and partner similar to what Goodyear is doing and working with our students there at the STEM high school. So uh, Principal Johnson was extremely helpful in organizing and, and made sure that our students were a part of that and, and just the entire uh, team here helped make it work whether it was helping to write a let, write letters and Megan and, and uh, with her uh, experience at the chamber giving us that list of the corporations and helping us make sure that we had the correct addresses and, and some of those things we had a representative from Gojo Rita who was very much a part of the team another uh, one of my colleagues from Akron Children's who's a member of our foundation worked with us so this was truly just a team effort in every single regards and we just tried to keep everyone in the loop and, and had a great time. And you know part of what the funds will do is help us to provide, to provide learning expeditions and I know that not only are learning expeditions for the learners but they're also for the learning coaches or the teachers and instructional leader Johnson maybe you can share what we've begun to do with some of the funding as far as professional development, development is concerned. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, um, one of the things we did this year was uh, we partnered with a, a art company in Columbus called Journey 360, and the goal was to create um, a professional development that was a year-long professional development that embedded and infused our coaches with the permission to be creative. So, this creativity camp, or what we call building a creative mindset, was done so that our coaches could walk into the classroom with the idea that they're gonna give their learners permission to be creative. Um, with that, we created an innovation portfolio where we're going to not assess the characteristics of innovation, but we're going to build and embed those skills as part of our everyday process. So the assessments will not only be whether or not they can get the work and they can understand it, but we're also asking them to master assessments such as um, 
communication, um, observing, all of those things that we want our learners to have when they walk away from the STEM high school, and they go into college, and then take over in our communities as STEM leaders. So that's, that was just part of our training this summer. And instructional leader uh, Johnson also talked about wanting to use the funds to help build an internship program and um, that will allow our learners to get into the community, into places of business and organizations so that they can actually start putting those skills that they're learning into um, reality, those 21st century skills. I, I cannot forget to mention that um, Allison White played an integral role throughout the campaign efforts. She kept track to make sure that you know the money <laughs> that we were getting closer to that goal and um, when we finally got that that last bit Kirsten I have to say we were so excited because as you can see on the uh, paper that you may have which you can also see here on the screen we GAR they challenged us and and we met the challenge and we we actually exceeded the challenge but the one hundred and seventeen thousand dollars that the foundation committed to us um, really is going to make a huge impact in our district for STEM education and to further it. And we really want to thank you. And if you could also thank Christine for us for the work of the foundation. Would you like to say anything, Kristen? Just that um, I appreciate the recognition, but really you all make our work really easy because you take funding and we get the great privilege of writing checks uh, from uh, the legacy of Roadway and Galen Rausch's uh, generosity, but you make the money impactful. You make it work, and uh, most importantly for the students uh, that, that you all serve. So thank you, and bravo. All right, thank you very much. One last round of applause for the GAR Foundation. <laughs> Our superintendent doesn't seek recognition oftentimes he doesn't want it but I also just want to say that um, David was there I won't say every step of the way because we tried to use David when we needed to understanding you know what he what he is good at um, but um, also understanding the value that he would bring to some of the meetings and things that we would have one-on-one -on -one with some of our corporations so um, but not only that I mean if we sent an email to David we got a response if we had a question um, about anything, we were, you know, always, uh, they were always responsive, and I just, I can't, you know, step away without thanking um, uh, Superintendent James and uh, saying, you know, you know, you need me, just call me, uh, uh, not raise money, well, well, <laughs> but I, I just wanted to mention that. He was the closer, as you He was the closer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for your time Thank this you. evening. We appreciate Thanks. your efforts. Thanks. Have a wonderful Thanks. evening. And before you all leave, I just wanted to make sure um, that we're all aware that the initial challenge uh, several years ago, back in 2012, was 650000 from uh, GAR over a three-year period, and that the community had to raise twice that amount, or $1.3 million, and we've, again, with this year's uh, match, we've exceeded that uh, $1.3 million match. So it's close to $2 million in assistance that's come in over the past uh, several years to help our STEM program. So again, thanks to the GER Foundation. <laughs> the best parts that I think that sometimes gets lost in the translation about all of the, the money and the um, innovation that goes into STEM is that it's not just sitting in a building downtown. That all that innovation, all those best practices are being taken and pushed out from there to the other middle schools, to the other clusters. So. Um, it's, it's not just those students that benefit, it's all of our students that benefit from the, from the knowledge that's being um, 
push that it's done. So thank you very much, all of you, for your time there and for, for what that means to our district. Um, next order of business is the approval of our meeting minutes from the regular meeting from August 25th. So moved. Second. Moved and properly seconded. Any additions or corrections to the meeting minutes? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Sims? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Yes.
You're not having to give up something in order to take music. This is allowing all of our students to at least have an introduction then and get, be given an instrument so that they can play. Because part of it was, could, you, could your parents afford an instrument? Was there one available at your school? Could you be taking out of math class? Could you be, would you miss those things? So without that as part of the, the barrier to some of our students, uh, it'll allow for so many more to at least have that window of music opened up to them. Then once they get to middle school or into the sixth grade, then they can make a choice. Oh, I'd really love to play the saxophone, or I'd really love to play the trumpet. Uh, but they already will have that foundation of reading music. So, so what's the possibility, since we're so techy, uh, of really having a video playing at Carnegie Hall while they play here? It's like simulcast. Mm -hmm. So yes. that they're actually yes, playing at Carnegie Hall. It is the Carnegie Hall curriculum that is vetted through that organization. So let me research that with Dr. Childs. Interesting. We'll do that. Back to you. Interesting. All right. Any other questions, comments? All right. Roll call, please. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Bravo. Yes. Mr. Lombardi. Yes. Mrs. Nancy. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mrs. Sims. Yes. Reverend Walker. Yes. And finally, Madam President, I have before me for your consideration seven business affairs recommendations. These recommendations are in proper form, and I move to approve. So moved. Second. Moved properly. Second. Any questions or comments about this in business? I have a couple questions on these. I didn't get a chance to talk to anyone ahead of time. Um, <coughs> item number two, which is training for our teachers. Uh, does anyone have any idea what that is? As far, is it by hours? Is it by number of teachers that we train? Or how does it work as far as the price we're paying for that? This is a partnership with Cleveland State University to get aspiring uh, principals through a licensure program. We partner with Cleveland State and have a cohort of uh, tapped teachers that we see as future principals. And so we pay part of their tuition, and that enables us to select them to go into that uh, cohort program. So it's a partial payment. It's not the full payment of their tuition. Where does the rest of the funds come from? They pay for themselves. Okay. Yeah, Any idea what the proportion would be between what we This year, the amount, do you want to talk about the dollar amounts this cohort? $2,500 a person. And the total master, uh, it's an alternative licensure pathway. It takes 18 months and it costs about twelve to 14000 so our stipend to each teacher would be yes. roughly two thousand. Okay. Very small. Thank you. Yeah, um, Deborah, we have briefly talked about the computer uh, hardware, and one thing, I didn't get to ask the second part of the question. If you uh, asked about uh, Chromebooks and how that experiment was going, and you said it went well, I'm wondering is there, is there any thought? down the line of starting to expand into Chromebooks because of licensing of software is non-existent or maybe less expensive than getting the PC. We actually are looking to get some additional Chromebooks as part of the budget set for this year because of the successful use of them. Now that, as you realize in my answer to you, not only were they being used for testing, we're now using them for ELA and math blended learning. So some of those were now wanting to make sure that there's enough units in the school so they can trade from room to room and then back up the hardware that we're also using. So it's a little bit of depending on where they are in the building as to what makes it more advantage to have the desktop or actually have the Chromebook. All right? Thank you. Just one question. On the, um, the purchase item one, it says we're, we're, we're needed. What does that mean? They, they train, they Mr. Rambler, would you please decide to inform them about the metal detectors, please? Yeah, the, by board policy, we do metal detectors on a random basis for weapon detection and prevention. We've had those for going on 10 years, so there's a couple that need to be replaced because they're not picking up those items. So it's just a replacement of those, and then we're also adding to the Miller South and Stud Middle School because we've never had them there. So those two purposes. 
Did I answer your question? Because I could. Somebody was coughing on the hall, so I'm sorry if I missed you. So the replacement ones are where? Uh, right. Well, what we've been doing is alternating them between a couple of schools. Miller South and STEM don't have them. So we're placing them there. We've been moving about the other ones as buildings have closed. So we're actually replacing old ones that were there. Okay, so where are they going? Miller Still, South Miller, and STEM. The STEM. Miller South and STEM. That's the that's three walk-through metal detectors? The third one's going to be at Barrett, which is our alternative location. The five pan tail, same location? Those are actually going to also be for sporting events because we do metal detection at sporting events as well. Thank you. And I have one more question, and it's about uh, item four with the uh, tutor and teaching at the juvenile court. Um, I guess what I'm curious about is the the use of a 24-hour math tutor. Um, I like the idea of the project, but I'm just wondering: is do we have math tutors? I mean, could someone explain a little bit more about what what all that is? 24-hour math tutor just sets, I, I want some explanation for that. <laughs> if all the kids are sleeping and someone's sitting there getting overtime, I just don't think it's I think it's, it's 24 hours a week. Yeah, it's part-time position. It's not 24 okay. hours a week. Okay. These are all part-time positions. Yeah. Oh. Right. These are, uh, we're required to provide services at the juvenile detention center. We have teachers there and we have instructional support services. So the 24-hour math tutor is our typical, that's the tutors we have all throughout the city. So they, the students there are eligible for them just like all other students based on need. Um, so this is this is up to 24 hours a week is how they're hired. And that's how we have it across the board? Yep, all, all throughout okay. the city. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I did just say 124 hours, so that begs the question. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Mr. Alexander. Yeah. Mr. Bravo. Yes. Mr. Lombardi. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mr. Sims. Yes. Reverend Walker. Yes. Thank you very much. I uh, just wanted to share just a little bit. Today is the 100th anniversary of West High School, which was actually then, I believe, closed in 1975, if I'm correct. No, that's not oh, when, when was it actually closed? It actually closed in 1980, but it, became, oh. it went from a high school in 1953 to a middle school and then closed in 1980. Yes, and the 80s went closed. Okay. They were wrong with the building. That's, 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 but right. that's what's in the documentation. I, can I gotcha. So it was originally open as a high school. It became a junior high, and then it was closed and turned into senior living. So the building was safe, and it has beautiful old architecture. It was amazing to walk through. I, I took some pictures. If you are my Facebook friend, you can go on and see them, or if you'd like to, I do have some. I'm probably going to share with Mr. Williams a little bit. He may want to put some of those up. Um, marble hallways or stairwells and brass handrails and woodwork that there's no way that you would put in any modern building today, but it's so beautiful and the craftsmanship ship was beautiful. Um, there were several graduates there. Um, I think the oldest, oh gosh, what year did she graduate? It was, I couldn't believe, her. she was, she had to be almost 100 years old. She was in her 90s, um, was the oldest graduate there. When I was there, I saw Miss Kelly there. She was there and she won a prize. What did you win? I want to give a card. Uh, no. <laughs> they were having drawings and they served a free lunch and um, it was just a lovely evening uh, or afternoon to be able to be there. My dad actually, my grandfather, my maternal grandfather graduated from West. My father went to the junior high until he was kicked out for fighting, which um, <laughs> he credits actually for turning his life around. He get, was sent then to um, Perkins and began running with a new crowd before he went to Bucktall. And uh, credits for him becoming a police officer because he actually sat down with the superintendent. I found out this story today. The stories you hear from your parents sometimes just amaze you because you think you know them. 
but his father drug him to the superintendent's office basically by his ear and had him beg not to be expelled. And he was sent and changed his whole life and he became a police officer. So who knows what happened. So West High had a special place in my heart. So it was incredible to be able to go there. But I just wanted to, to piggyback a little bit off what Reverend Walker said. Who and I sometimes tend to be on the same way, like, which I love. <laughs> um, but the character of the building was incredible and beautiful, but it's nothing compared to the character of the people that we have that work for Akron Public Schools. And I think that's what was the shining uh, thing that came out of the smiling older faces that I saw walking through that building or the sweet young faces that um, we get to see that are in our buildings now is the character of our teachers, it's the characters of our staff, it's the character of the families that make Akron Public Schools what Akron Public School is. It's a beautiful building. It's just a building. It's not a school anymore because kids are what make the school. The children and our staff are what make it a school. It's lovely and it's wonderful, but it's um, it's the people and it's the character that is in them that that we appreciate. So I just wanted to, to say that's where my heart was today. And um, it was just a wonderful time. So if you ever get a chance to go through, if they ever have another open house, or I'll bet if you knocked on the door, they'd, they'd let you go in. Um, they were wonderful. So thank them for that. And I already welcome Ryan earlier, but he is going to give us a brief treasure report. Brief, just brief. I'll just echo uh, what he talked about with the welcoming people from getting my office assembled to uh, our printer and all the help that I got from the staff uh, and all the help that I see them giving the board while you went through the process of hiring. So got a week under my belt and just met wonderful people along the way. By the end of the week, I also talked to you in the interview about a transition plan. I'll deliver a transition plan report to you as well as maybe Institute Finance Committee meetings and those kind of things. So I'll look forward to getting that report to you by the end of the week. So thanks so much. Okay. For this will be the Oh, I'm so sorry. I jumped right into it. That's okay. <laughs> my excitement. I forget. Um, Tara, did this dance? I have Tara Bruce to introduce to you. Uh, Tara is a graduate of McKinley High School in Canton. And shortly after that, she took off and went to Florida, where she obtained her bachelor's degree in elementary education from Florida a and University, and then her master's degree in integrated learning and educational technology from Jacksonville University in 2003, and earned a master's degree in educational leadership from the University of North Florida in 2006, and received her principal's license in August of 2014. She worked from 1996 through about 2004 at uh, several um, elementary schools in Duval County, Florida, where she taught kindergarten and first grade. She also held various building leadership roles, such as grade level chair, school technology coordinator, and textbook manager. In 2004, she became an instructional coach for the Duval County Public Schools, and in this role, she provided school-wide professional development and standards-based instruction, differentiated instruction, and inquiry-based science and math instruction. She assisted teachers using methods of modeling, co-teaching, and coaching. She held this position for three years through 2007. In 2007, she became an elementary principal for the Duval County Public Schools, where she used best practices to effectively focus and allocate resources, sources such as staff, budget, and curricular materials among four low-performing schools. She used her school and student data to establish school policies and to shape classroom instruction. Then she decided she missed the Ohio winters here. <laughs> and we were lucky enough to snap her up, and she's being recommended tonight for an elementary dean of students position, and she will be working at Case and Harris Elementary Schools. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you. I'm very excited. I feel special. I come from a large district, so this would have never happened there. Um, <laughs> never. Um, thank you for the opportunity, and I am very excited to service the students at both uh, Case and Harris. I just started on Thursday and then I hit the ground running. So thank you. <laughs> Say something briefly, um, Patrick. 
myself and David met with Ryan this past week just to talk about and bring uh, talk about what we might like the finance committee to look like and function here in the future. And just uh, a couple things that might be of interest to the board. We briefly talked about uh, trying to get some kind of a dashboard, if you will, for lack of better words, so it's a little easier for anybody, which probably includes everybody, uh, to understand school funding, you know, looking just briefly at something and get a, you know, uh, a glimpse of real time on what's going on with our budget and our finances and things of that nature. Uh, so, and we also talked about uh, Ryan's want or need for a specific software uh, that helps him, has helped him in the past and I think will help us as well. So just, uh, and it's not expensive. Uh, by any way, shape, or form, there's a, 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 a licensing fee and then, a and then an annual uh, maintenance fee. Um, but it is something that will be very likely coming to the board in the near future to help him do his job and help, which in turn helps us do our job. So, so I mentioned that. Any unfinished business? I know Ms. Sims has some new business she wants to bring. I've talked to most, I've talked to everyone. Um, Akron Summit Community Action um, does periodic uh, forums. Uh, we are looking at hosting a youth forum uh, entitled Building Up Our Youth, Shape, uh, Framing a Vision for Our Future's Future, uh, targeting um, young people between the ages of 16 and 24. Um, the, the forum will help us to begin to assess some of those needs, uh, particularly for those students who are dropping out of school and trying to return um, back into uh, mainstream. Many of them are without uh, the education necessary, so they feel like they've hit a wall. Uh, but it'll give us an opportunity to explore some of the needs to develop uh, youth programming around uh, that particular targeted population. And if I asked for um, the Akron Public Schools um, co-sponsorship of that event, uh, which is $200 with the sponsorship, but I think most important, uh, just having uh, the board support uh, for the program. Yeah. Do we need a motion to so move? Second. Second. Any questions? Alexander? Yes. Mr. Lombardi? Yes. Mr. Mainsbury? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mrs. Sims? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I'd like to bring up something real brief under your business as well. Just an observation I had this week. Uh, and it, it, dovetails on uh, something I thought of in the past and just brought us again because it happened again this week and actually ends up being helpful to me. Uh, on occasions when we haven't had our board packet in these, Marilyn will send them out by email to us. And when I get it in email, I can read it on this. So I was able to read my board packet as I sat in the car on a Thursday night instead of having to make an appointment with myself to go blow dust off this thing and actually read it. Uh, and I understand there's private things we can't send out an email blast and we have to read them here. And I still appreciate and we still need them here so we can look back on them you know, in the past and, you know, as, as an archive. But I uh, just thought I'd bring up as food for thought for the board that maybe it would be nice and be helpful for me anyways if we got them in both manners every week. Because uh, I'm not a Apple guy, I'm a PC guy, and I can read it on my PC or I can read it on my phone, my Android. If you want to. <laughs> it just, like I said, it gives me the ability to read more at my convenience, if you will. Like I said, instead of making an appointment with myself to sit at my desk and like get this thing out. So, for whatever that's worth, I just thought I'd bring that up. Tim and I could do this commercial. Sorry, I'm on the Mac. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it was nice flipping on. I, I I realized that too. That worked out well. We hope for, for two of us. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Good point. 
Um, just one item for new business. Um, I've spoken with Lisa about it. We did receive a request um, from the, the county, and, and I'll be following up to to present a resolution of support for the county sales tax um, before the Board of Education. Um, so I will work with the county and David's office and Lisa and Bruce to get um, a resolution for your consideration together. So. Anything else? Test the communications equipment stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. We still have no need for executive session for correct. Oh, thank goodness. It is a beautiful night, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, darn. Okay. 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 No, we don't have any conversation about something that we're going to lose. We're not going to. Not yet. No, not yet. No. no. Well, all right. So, okay. Wait a minute. Could you say my name for Roll call, please. This is it. Yeah. Oh, she's this is all right. Yeah. This is Rob. Yes. 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 Yes.